So let's go just to briefly go right back to the beginning, fourth grade. Yeah, started fourth grade. with the accordion. Yeah, how do you know all this? <laughs> I actually heard an interview with you. Okay, yeah, right. I did. I started with the accordion. We had a strange uh, school there, and uh, it was in Minneapolis. I only had 14 other kids in my uh, in my grade school classes. It was a very uh, it was in an older neighborhood, and there wasn't that many kids at that time. So I had yeah. really small classes, and they offered the accordion. And both of my sisters were right behind me. So I ended up carrying those accordions, and I wasn't into that, so I switched to the flute. That was fine. <laughs> a little easier to yeah, put in your pocket. So, yeah, so I, I, I switched to the flute until I got to junior high school, and then that was that it wasn't muy macho to be playing the flute in junior high school, so I had to give that up. That was peer pressure. It, it, peer pressure came in early. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I was just wondering, since the accordion is my favorite instrument, yeah. when you're going to get back to that? Yeah, I, 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 like the, I like the accordion. He had these, he had the big ones, you know. The, I, I wish he oh, would the have piano the, Yeah, stuff. the big. Oh, they're beautiful instruments. There's, they have so many possibilities, that's the uh, thing. We're actually carrying around a harmonium. So that's, that's sort of like the accordion, but it's an Indian version of it. So you got um, you got Ray here with you, Ray Woods, and he's going to be with you, playing with you tonight. Yep. And uh, welcome, Ray. Oh, he's <laughs> so, uh, from the, just the, you you picked up the guitar in high school, and then from the high school high school to the Jayhawks, when you were one of the members who started that, what what happened in between there? I went back to, I went back, I went actually out to California, lived with my grandmother, came back to Minnesota after that senior year of high school, and I, and I was exposed to uh, punk rock. I went down to the clubs in Minneapolis and saw all these punk rock bands. There was also rockabilly like you were playing. There was like, people were into rockabilly kind of as a, you know, sort of a rebellious anti sort of thing in a weird way, and they would go down and dance and dress up in 50s clothes. There was like a couple clubs like that in Minneapolis. They would have it once or twice a week. And so I kind of got into that. I got into early Johnny Cash and um, Woody Guthrie, and I started to learn how to, you know, think about writing songs. I took many years to really sit down and, and write a decent song. The early songs were, you know, like everybody, you just listen to somebody and kind of do a takeoff on that. And I kind of went back and forth to my grandma's house. I would stay in Minnesota a while, then I'd go back out and live with her in California. And I saw some bands out in California then, Green on Red, the, the, law, the, the, the Lone Justice. And, and so I was exposed to kind of this country rock thing a little bit from the L.A. stuff and then went back to Minnesota and I had this little germ of, you know, like I just thought, you know, there wasn't any bands doing that in Minnesota at the time, so we started up the Jayhawks and kind of went in that direction, though we didn't stay in that direction, but that, that's sort of how we got going. Right on. Yeah. Well, I, I was interested on that when, it, when, you were, when you were playing with the Jayhawks started up, were you focused on what you were doing or were you conscious of like, this is a new direction? No, that, no, no. Uh, it was, it was, it, it, there was blues bands and there was country bands in Minnesota. They weren't in the rock scene, so we were trying to take a little more folk tradition into the rock scene in a weird way, but we weren't, um, we had jobs and we were trying to get gigs on Monday night, Tuesday night, and that was our focus in trying to write songs. We weren't um, really, we didn't have any sort of grand ideas out there. And in fact, we had a lot of, uh, we were just striving to be better, basically. That, that was the basic goal. Never knew you were going to yeah. be revered as. Uh, I don't say revered. Progenitors of. Yeah, but what we did, if you, if I look back, what we did was we did something just a little different than what was going on at the yeah. time. So so that worked for us in the long run. Um, there was plenty of times when we were together as a band, and then grunge was going on, and things like that. When we were, you know, we were definitely leapfrogged by by bands that were more current in the time. That that's just the way it was. But we just kind of kept doing what we were doing, and then, you know, I kind of went off and did a, this uh, folk group with Victoria, who, by the way, is going to be coming down tonight. Oh, she, great. Yeah, she, she has friends in Seattle. She's coming up. She's going to play the gym bay with us. So, Wonderful. Yeah, so, so it's, yeah. Um, so why don't, we, uh, why don't we lead back to the present and, and uh, hear something else? Okay, we're going to play a little bit of freedom, and uh, Ray's going to sing along with me here. <laughs> Days 
this I remember Live again in the country Dream again as once again So the days I remember Where would you go at the end of the day If you lost everything that was good That's Mark Olson. Olson along with Ray w Woods, and that is the first track off of the new CD. And uh, just, uh, you can catch more of that really pretty music tonight at the Triple Door, 8 p.m. You can also, uh, if you're up Bellingham Way, you can yeah. uh, see something, uh, see a show tomorrow night at the, uh, at the Green Fog Frog Tavern. Yeah, we're playing uh, Seattle tonight at the Triple Door, and then um, Bellingham uh, Saturday night at the Green Frog. It's our Washington Swing, so our Washington Two Step. <laughs> so we're, this is what we're, what we're doing here. Well, we're delighted to have you. Yeah. And thanks so much for coming yeah. out to the studio today. I was wondering, on your with your solo albums and and now with Many Colored Kite, do you have a vision for a direction, or or do you just kind of feel your way? What's it? What's your your style? Does something draw you on with your yeah. your solo work now? Yeah, it's a it, uh, good question. Um, things that uh, I start thinking about stuff that's going on in my life and, and the uh, people that I'm with, they kind of show the direction. That that this this record was a work done with a Norwegian woman, Ingen Ringvald, and by us working together, it kind of showed the direction of of the album and and. Uh, the 
ideas that I talk about in, in daily life, that's kind of what I want to do. And, and also it's uh, different instruments and different musical groups that I see over the course of the year. I have some ideas now for, for a new record and even playing with Ray, some of the beats and grooves he's laying down. It just, uh, this last record, you know, I played with this Italian too, he played the violin, and that's why there's those three songs with the strings on them, because we want to utilize that. It's sort of by going out and playing live, you get these different elements that work. And like on this last song, the, the, the part where, you know, then the break, and then you sing, that works live. There's just weird little things that you, you pick up by playing live. Okay, if you have the music going, then boom, stop, sing, and then back on the music. Just those little things, and you want to work them into songs. You realize what makes people in the audience kind of think, oh, whoa, 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 he stopped and he's singing. Now he's playing again. He stopped and he's singing. Okay, that sounds... So it's just these, you pick up these little things and you want to utilize them. It's also a... I want to use different languages on my next record. That's something I'm working on actually right now. I, I went to this international summer school. I'm going to have different parts of different languages on it. I don't know if it's going to get past the editor part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try it. I'm going to, yeah. make a, an, I'm going to make an attempt. Worth a shot. I did it a little bit on this one. Ingen sings a little bit in a Norwegian on one song. But I, I want to, you know, maybe add that a little bit of mo a more as an element. Because I listen to music in French and Norwegian and Italian and in other languages. I don't know what they're talking about for the most part. But I really like it. Uh, it just creates a different feeling inside mm. of you.